And welcome back to the show. Tough times never last. It's a lovely Wednesday night in Melbourne and Brisbane, wherever you're watching from. Love and best wishes to everybody who's going through some tough times. And it's part of the human condition, isn't it? Uh, life dishes out a lot of um, problems, whether you might lose a loved one, whether you might be depressed, suicidal, um, you might be financially broke. But, you know, 10 years ago, I, I read this thing um, at some uh, Buddhist... Um, temple it said everything that happens in your life happens for your very maximum benefit not that there's something great in it but that everything happens happens for your very maximum benefit even those tough knocks in life and I've adopted that philosophy over the last 10 or 15 years and um, and it makes life such an exciting journey because all the challenges you think well this is uh, by design uh, that we're all here to become wiser stronger and just have a bit more fun I mean, it's, life's, it can't be that serious all the time. You know, if you're serious all the time, you're going to waste your life and then uh, die a very serious person. But just have a bit of fun, just like our guest tonight, Kylie Minogue. I mean, <laughs> Milly Minogue. Um, you're having a lot of fun, you know. You've got a lovely smile. Uh, you love people, but you don't care about the knockers. And there must be a few knockers uh, uh, when you're on stage. Oh, yes, yeah, always. Yeah, the, the, everyone's got something to say and um, sort of... Um, they try to be the sort of hero of the, the room and sort of, you know, they think it's funny, but it's not. It's just quite boring. And <laughs> I really, really dislike uh, backstabbers, you know, uh, cyber bullying, work bullying. I, I really think it's disgraceful. And uh, it's usually people with small penises who uh, backstab. <laughs> and, uh, you know, uh, you get it in all professions, but uh, people who want to put pe other people down. Yeah, it's just, uh, I, a lot of the time it's jealousy. It's jealousy and it's, yeah. um, uh, you know, it wouldn't be nice if we could all be um, peaceful and loving towards each other and very uh, non-judgmental. I, I, I love Buddhism. Uh, what a great philosophy, you know, whatever we uh, think about, say or do comes back. It's like throwing a boomerang all the time. Whatever you dish out to another human being comes back to you, doesn't it? Yes. What a beautiful way to be. It's perfect. It's a perfect way yeah. to be, isn't it? But um, I just sort of somehow think it's going to happen. <laughs> it's going to happen, will it? Um, yeah, it's bizarre. It is bizarre. I, I walk around the courts and uh, no one's smiling. Everyone's serious and they're all uh, like closed books. And no I one's think smiling. as the years go on, it's getting worse. Yeah. Like, you know, people are resorting to sort of like, okay, uh, people want to make a dollar quickly, so they resort to sort of like illegal things and think they're not going to get caught or, you know, sort of um, drugs or something like that. And um, they end up sort of stuffing their whole life up. So Good point. That's exactly right, uh, folks. People, uh, you know, go to the prisons and uh, people in there, they come out and they think we'll commit another crime and get away with it this time. But you never do because it's so simple. Every action has a reaction. What you put into life, you get out of life. And it's that simple. Um, so goodwill goes a long way, doesn't it? Yes. And I think, you know, sort of to go through life, you have to have basically a job or you have to have training or um, something. You can't have life easy in terms of, you know, I'll just do this on the sly and that's it. You know what I mean? No. It has to be all legit. It has to be all above board. It has to... Life is not simple, is it? Life, no. life is very complex. A lot of people leave school and all of a sudden they're hit with a job, the GST, taxes, uh, the car service, and all of a sudden they have so many bills, they, uh, they go bankrupt in the first two years. But uh, uh, discipline is so important, isn't it? Yes, I think, and, and, and drive as well. And, yeah, and you've certainly got that. Tell, tell me, uh, how did you meet Kylie Minogue? Um, it was just basically, I was working in a, a club here in Melbourne years ago called Three Faces, and I'm um, doing a show, and she just came in one night off, um, and saw the show, loved it, came backstage, um, commented, and then sort of said, oh, we'll be in touch, basically, because you, you, know, you really impressed me that much. Um, so that's when I got the phone call to be in her coffee table book, you know, photos and a um, little story, and then... You superstar. It sort of all raveled on from there, so... That's lovely. Well, and uh, yeah, you've become friends. Yeah. So with her family as well, and... Um, and, like, a great great praise from her, so, which yeah. is um, good in terms of, you know, it's good for business and... Of course, and, and when, she, when she was going through her medical problems, you must have... Um, uh, fell for her. Yeah, well, I didn't do any shows in that time, so because um, I thought, you know, I can't. I felt guilty, sort of making money off her when she's in a, of course, in a in a illness at the time. So of course, um, 
Um, Molly Meldrum, you've uh, worked with him as well? Yes, yeah, he's an old dear friend as well. So, yeah. yeah. Um, worked with him at Heat Nightclub and on a Sunday. Of course. Yeah, and that was for like for a few years, yeah. We were just talking about the Bojangles before back. Remember the old Bojangles on uh, the St Kilda Beach there? Back in those days, I was a, uh, a young copper um, with an ego working at St Kilda when I was 18, 19, 20. Um, and Bojangles was always an interesting place, wasn't it? Oh, it was rough. It was it's sort of like the underbelly, sort of. Yeah. yeah. It was like one of those scenes out of underbelly. Yeah. Was... I, re I remember, folks, I used to have the long coat, you know, and the senior constable stripes and walk through the palace and... Uh, walk through all the venues, you know, you'd have a few uh, bourbon and cokes, they'd call it a special coke. I think every pub would give the coppers a special coke and um, you might be a foot patrol but you'd be uh, inebriated by the end of the shift. Uh, yes. Those were the 80s and um, yeah. that's the way it worked but uh, it's so good to get rid of that ego, isn't it? You yes. know, the uniforms, the titles, the... Um, isn't it amazing when people book in, I'm doctor such and such, I'm this and uh, they put their little letters at the end of their uh, their name. Which people don't understand what they no, are anyway. but it's, it's all <laughs> yeah. that, uh, you know, it, wouldn't it be nice if we could just uh, reach out to others, greet others and find out about others, you know, uh, uh, shift our attitude from what's in it for me, to, uh, uh, how can we help, how can we serve, you know what I mean? Yeah. And you're doing that, you're entertaining people all over Australia, congratulations. Thank I you. love that, uh, I love success stories. Tell me about some of the, um, some of the ex exciting um, uh, private functions you've done. Um, like so many corporate stuff, um, sort of, uh, the list is endless. So, you know, like I've done so many things like, you know, corporate sort of Christmas parties, bucks parties. Um, Any VIPs? Um, well, I actually did Julie McMahon's Bucks party when he was getting married to Denny at the time. So he hired the top floor of the Adelphi Hotel here in um, Flinders Lane yeah. in Melbourne. Um, and his best friend was a good friend of mine. So, so you know, do you want to do his Bucks party? It'd be quite fun. I'm organising the entertainment. And, you know, the lift comes up and it opens up and onto that top floor. And he said it'll be a good surprise and um, it'll be a, a laugh. And so do it. And I went, OK, so... Um, and, yeah, there's been other things, like I've just come back from Alice Springs doing the Masters Games, um, which Millie, is... Millie, besides all the fun and uh, entertainment, I mean, not all people are nice and not all people are peaceful. Uh, the, uh, the grog uh, brings out a lot of violence. Has, has, have there been dangerous situations for you while uh, performing? Uh, no, I just... Afterwards, perhaps, when you mingle with the crowd after a show, um, there's sort of some... People are a bit confused and, um, you know, they sort of <laughs> don't know what to... Asking a lot of stupid questions. Yeah, and they're, they're sort of quite blunt and, um, yeah, some people don't like it. Um, still in this world there's, you know, homophobic people and um, yeah. it's bizarre. So, and a lot of people can't sort of keep their mouths to themselves and... No. Yeah, but majority of the time you get quite looked after and you know because normally I'm by myself so whoever's booked me you know yeah and, 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 and the advice uh, viewers is just be yourself be your authentic self uh, whatever uh, the world's given you the, the way you look the way you feel be yourself and uh, make the most of it but being authentic is so important isn't it because you, you're not going to uh, uh, die with a group you, you really come here by yourself and you're going to leave by yourself so you really have to be your own very best mate. Uh, you've got to honour and respect yourself, don't you? Yes, you do. Without um, uh, being vain, without having a big ego, I suppose. Well, you basically have to be confident and proud of yourself yeah. because that is projected to, like, say, like the first time you meet someone, first impressions count. Um, so if you're proud and confident of yourself and you project yourself in a normal fashion, <laughs> not too sort of arrogant and stuck up and all that, um, People remember that, and so then down the track, life becomes good. Life becomes good. Isn't that amazing? That's exactly right. We don't want stuck-up people. We don't want people with egos. We don't want people to say they live in a $5 million home and this is my new car. I mean, it, wealth is great. It's fantastic. It makes life so much more joyful. But we don't want this comparison uh, business. There's so many people out there who are on, the, on a competitive plane. They're always competing against the Joneses. The Joneses, they're never happy. They go through life being unhappy. Uh, and what we really must remember is just be yourself and, and be on a creative plane. Create your own life.
If you want to live in the bush in a caravan, fantastic, you know. But really do follow your own journey and, um, and be good to others. Uh, smile a bit more and reach out and uh, you can even hug people. Like Henry over here, who's coming up shortly, love and best wishes. He sends love and best wishes to everybody and that's where I get it from, you know. But we'll talk about uh, your success story after the next break, Millie. Sure. Uh, back very shortly. Thank you.